Hello and thank you for watching this video on the proper and safe operation of the vacuum former here at TC Maker. I'll go over some important safety information as well as how to properly set up and operate the machine. This machine is fairly easy to operate and is overall a very safe machine to use. There are a few things you need to be aware of when using this vacuum former. The first thing I want you to be aware of is that this process requires the plastic to be heated to a temperature of 185 to 260 degrees. To do this, there is a heater mounted on top of the machine. The top of the machine is open. This is to allow heat to escape as to not overheat the heater. But if anything is placed up there, this would be a fire hazard. Also, it is above eye level, so it would be easy to miss something if something were placed up there. So with that in mind, always check above the machine before turning the heaters on just to make sure that something wasn't placed up there and you were not aware of it. And finally in regards to the heater, these surfaces become hot when the plastic is being heated. So keep in mind that this surface here is too hot to touch during the operation of heating the plastic. The frames themselves become at least as hot as the plastic during the heating process and the metal frame holds the heat much longer than the plastic itself. So when you're removing the plastic you need to keep in mind that these frames are going to remain hot for some time. So you should always wear gloves when removing the plastic from the frame. So as you can see, the machine has got a fine layer of dust uh, pretty much covering all the surfaces. That's because the machine is located in the corner of the wood shop near the dust collectors. And this tends to just kind of blanket the machine with a layer of dust. So before we start using the machine, it's always a good idea, it's actually a must, to take and clean off the machine before operation. Uh, this includes above the machine the top surface of the heater because that gets a fine layer of dust on it and when it heats up it will stink and nobody wants that. So what I uh, recommend you do is to get the air hose from around the corner and blow the machine off thoroughly before you um, begin the process of doing any vacuum forming. So um, first thing you want to make sure you're wearing some eye protection before you start to blow off the dust. And then start with the top of the machine and blow off the area above because that's where the dust is going to collect and when it gets hot it will stink. So once once you've thoroughly blown off the top then proceed to the other surfaces blow off the the area here because dust is not your friend when it comes to vacuum forming um, if, if you're looking for a fine smooth surface it can actually just really mess that up for you and then finally blow off the the vacuum pump itself uh, we don't want to get any dust in, in, in that as well. So once you've blown off the surfaces, you're basically ready to start vacuum forming. So now you're ready to start vacuum forming. So the frame is fairly heavy, weighs probably 10 pounds, and when you raise it up to the heat, the arms over center and they lock in the upright position but it wouldn't take too much to actually bump them past center and have the frame come down uncontrolled so with that we have these locking pins that need to be placed in there to prevent the frame from coming down unexpectedly this is <clears throat> something that you need to do if you're going to be working underneath the 
uh, frames when they're in the upright position. Now the frame itself will stay up it's not going to come down unless it gets hit pretty hard so it's these pins don't have to be in place during the heating process they're they're just there as a safety measure if uh, you're going to be working for uh, some time on positioning your buck and, and working on the platen etc they're there to can keep you from uh, having it come down unexpectedly. <laughs> the last thing I need you to be aware of <clears throat> is when raising and lowering the frame, the arms swing down and there needs to be clearance behind the machine so that when this frame comes down the there's no obstruction behind the machine for the arms to come down on. So this brings us to the basic setup of the machine and I'll go into more detail of setting up the machine in the vacuum forming class but in this video I want to show you just a few basics. First off is you need to be aware of the size platen you need to use for whatever part you intend to form. Uh, if your platen is too large you'll have too much excess plastic and you'll end up with uh, a problem with webbing. So when you decide the size of your platen you need to adjust the size of the frame. And to do that the tools to do that are over here in the corner on the shelf. Uh, there is a, a small wrench that I can't seem to get out of the holder um, and the bolts that are uh, uh, the appropriate size for the frame are also stored here and down below are the uh, square tubing that makes up the internal portions of the frame. So once you've decided on the appropriate size of your platen you need to get the corresponding uh, parts out for the frame uh, to uh, to assemble the frame in to the size you need. Um, now one thing I want you to be aware of is that these bolts are half inch bolts and that's really large enough to hold the wheels on a semi truck and this is just lightweight tubing so um, I, for that reason I purposely chose this little short stubby handled ratchet and um, that's so that you can't really get the leverage to crank that bolt in enough to uh, actually crush the frames. So if you're wondering why uh, they're, I'm asking you to use this stubby little ratchet to assemble it, that's the reason. So when you go to assemble the, the frame you want to leave all the bolts loose. You want to have uh, basically everything uh, all s screwed together before you actually start to tighten anything up. So all these frames should just simply be loose in there until you're ready to uh, to have the in the entire assembly made. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just uh, putting in the bolts, getting them, getting the frame started. So I'm going to skip ahead until um, uh, I've got the frame assembled. So there you have it. That's basically the machine set up for a 12x12 12 12 platen. Uh, and just one more important thing to show you before uh, we move on to how to uh, operate the pump and the heaters.
So when you're loading the frame, you need to be aware that this uh, frame here, even though it is uh, got some uh, sort of gas struts on there to help hold it open, it still can come down and, and close with some force. So just be aware that if it's wide open, um, you don't want it to come slamming down onto your fingers. Prior to operating the vacuum pump, the sight glass here on the side of the pump needs to be checked for the oil level. The oil level can't get below that lower line. If it is, the pump should not be used. What we're looking at here are the switches that control the heaters. The heater is divided into four different zones. The first switch here controls zone one, which is the center's uh, two heating panels. The second switch controls zone two, which is the next two panels outward. And then the third switch and fourth switch control the third and fourth panels. So the next switch we have is the switch that turns the vacuum pump on. Uh, as you can see, the gauge then reads out how much vacuum is being generated by the pump, and that gauge reads out in inches of mercury. And the red button in the center, that is the vacuum release. When you push that, that opens the valve that uh, actually pulls the plastic down and creates your vacuum form. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the zones that I was talking about before on the switches. So the two center panels you see heating up now are controlled by the switch, the first switch, which is zone one. And um, then when you flick the second switch, the uh, next two panels will uh, begin to heat up that is the you know switch two and also uh, zone two as you can see them starting to heat there and then the third switch would then heat the next two panels and the fourth switch the two outermost panels this allows you to only heat uh, the area for which you have uh, the frame set up for So the last two things I want to show you is the second use for the safety pins. They can be placed through the uh, side rails and that allows you to have a midpoint where you can lower the frame to uh, so that way you can uh, load the plastic or adjust your uh, bucks down below without having the um, frame in your way. And, uh, and then uh, in addition to showing you that, I want to show you uh, a little detail about the platens. The platens are all marked front because the, uh, it basically only fits correctly in the machine one way and that's with the, with, uh, the front label on the platen facing the front of the machine. And then, as you can see there, the uh, platen fits over that little piece of PVC pipe that is uh, protruding up. So that's, uh, that's pretty much uh, everything I wanted to show you about uh, setting up and operating the machine. Last thing, when you're finished for the day, Turn off the main breaker and that will shut down the machine. Be sure to do that or the uh, vacuum gauge will stay energized and be on all night long. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video on 
the operation of the vacuum former and for putting up with me for 15 minutes during this video so again thank you for watching the video and take another couple minutes to just watch the vacuum former in action